Today we discuss three contact circuits. In the previous lecture, we discussed two contact circuits. And we saw that the truth table had, for two contact circuits, would have two to the two is equal to four rows. All right, so it would be, look something like this. You'd have an A and a B for the inputs, and then a Y for the output. And you'd go through, and you'd just list all the possible values of A and B, like 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, right? And there would be four, four different rows. And then, of course, you could have either a 0 or 1 for each of the Y outputs. So for each row, you could have two possible values. So that would be 2 to the 4 is equal to 16 truth tables or functions. And we worked out every one of those, right? That was practical. So now if we have three contacts, well, we're going to have 2 to the 3 is equal to 8 rows in our truth table. And then we'll have 2 to the 8 is 256, let's just say functions or truth tables. Well, we're not going to work out all 256 functions. And of course, if we have four contacts, four input variables, right, it gets bigger still. And every time we add a new variable, the number of rows in the truth table doubles and the number of functions goes up right, exponentially. So this very quickly becomes impractical for us to work out all possibilities. Instead, we have to focus on some general concepts that we can apply to any truth table with any number of input variables. So let's, here we can certainly write out the rows of the truth table when we have three contacts. Let's put the row number here, A, B, C, and here will be Y. And we'll just put all the A, B, C values now, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, and 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1, 1. Any possible combination of three ones or zeros is contained in this truth table. And this will be row 0, row 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. So there are eight total rows. And then we can put our y value over here. Okay, and again, we'll have 256 possibilities, the way we could fill out these y values. Now, we already discussed in the previous lecture the idea of systematic ways to describe a truth table in terms of logic functions. One approach used min terms. And these are functions that are one for that row and zero for all other rows. So we'd say here, A, B, and C are all equal to zero. So what would be one? Well, not A would be one, and not B would be one, and not C would be one. Or down here at row seven, A, B, and C are all one, so a and B and C would be one in that row. And you change any one of those values, and then one of these is going to be a zero, and then it's the, the, the product is zero. right? And so we could just go, go through and fill all these out. If you see a zero, then you put the negation. So you've got not A and not B and C. In the next row, you've got not A and B and not C. And in the next row, you've got not A and B and C. And then... A and not B and not C. Here you've got A and not B and C. Here you've got A and B and not C. Okay, so those are the min terms. And what we do is for every row that has a one for the truth table, we write that min term and then say plus or or that min term or all the other min terms. So we just explicitly write out an expression that sh shows the ones in the truth table. Now the other approach was to use what we call max terms. And these are functions 
that are zero for that row and one for all other rows. And they're in terms of ors, they're a sum type of expression. So here, a, B, and C are all zero. So what would be an expression that would be zero, uh, an or expression that would be zero for that? A or B or C. Of course, that's zero or zero or zero. Change any one of these three, and then one of these becomes a one. And one or anything else is one. Right? So it'll be one for all of the rows. Next row, so if you see a zero, then just put the variable. So we'd have A or B, and then C is a one. So what would be zero would be not C. Right, and so the, the last row, would they're all one, so that would be not A or not B or not C, right? Second row, row two, rather, A or not B or C. Here you've got A is, A is zero, and then B and C are both one, so A or not B or not C. Here A is one, so you've got not A uh, or B or C, and in row five, uh, a and C are one, so you got not A or B or not C. Row six, A and B are one, so not A or not B or C, and so on. So with the max term approach, we have a product of sums. We go through and we find all of the rows in the truth table for which the logic function is zero, and for each of those rows, we write a factor of these max terms. So with the max term approach, with the product of sums, right, this is the product of sums, we're explicitly uh, identifying the rows that are zero. With the min terms, where we have a sum of products, we're explicitly identifying the rows where y is equal to one. In the last lecture, we also introduced the idea of Carnot maps, or K-maps. Now for a two input function, we would have a two by two K-map. So here we put all the values, say, of variable A, and here are the two possible values of variable B. And then we put in our y value, 0 or 1, in here. And then look for different types of blocks, either rows or columns. What do we do when we have eight rows or three variables, three input variables? Well, it would be very convenient to have one dimension for each variable like we did here. We, right, we have left and right is A and up and down is B. Uh, but we can't do that on a flat sheet of paper. So instead, what we do is we're going to keep the two rows that we have in our previous two by two structure. And now we're gonna have, instead of two columns, we're gonna have four columns. So four columns, but still keep two rows. And we'll now see, we'll have the values corresponding to these two columns, zero will be the top, one will be the bottom, and then we'll put A and B for the columns. We'll have the values of A and B. So actually, let me move these a little bit over. A and B. So you could have 0, 0. You could have 0, 1. A is 0, B is 1. You could have A is 1 and B is 0. We're going to put that over here. We'll see why in a minute. And then you could have both equal to 1. So there, those are all the possible values of A and B. And then you combine that with the possible values of C. So this is a compromise because we have to draw this in two dimensions, but we have three variables. Now what we can do is go up here to our truth table, and for every A, B, and C value, like here, 0, 0, 0, that's row 0. So 0, 0, 0, that's row 0. Let's put a little 0 down there to represent the row. If you go through and do that, then the rows go 0, 1, 2, 3, and then they jump over to the right for 4 and 5. We'll see why in a minute and then six and seven. So with those row values, it's very easy to see a truth table and then just plug the values in to your K-map. So with this, we see uh, that the top row corresponds to C is equal to zero or logic function not C, and the bottom row, C is equal to one or logic function 
C. Now, what about the columns? Well, let's see. Uh, for A is equal to zero, that's either of the first two columns. So we'll do, we'll do this. The first two columns then correspond to A is equal to zero. That is logic function not A. And the second two columns correspond to A is equal to one. And that is logic function A. How about for B? Uh, the two middle columns correspond to B is equal to one or logic function B. And the left and right columns correspond to B is equal to zero. Logic function not B. So this compromise with drawing a three variable K map in two dimensions is we have this kind of funny thing where the C cells are all contiguous. The C, not C cells, C inverse cells are all contiguous. The A cells are all uh, contiguous here, and the not A cells are. The B cells are contiguous, but the not B cells are broken apart. Um, so what we do is we think of this as wrapping around. So we have wrap around here. You could imagine this K map actually being drawn on a cylinder. So you'd have, you know, up here on the top would be not C and then C, and then you'd have these different columns and they'd go around in a circle. And so the left and the right edges here of what we've drawn would actually be connected. And so these would be contiguous. So you gotta, when you're using this three variable K map, you have to think about the left and the right edges as connected. You have to think of this wrapping around. Now, this, this gets to the reason why we kind of drew these uh, row numbers in kind of a funny way, zero, one, two, three, and instead of four and five here, we put them over on the right and then six, seven here. If we had switch, swapped these, then the A values would, would go, um, I'm sorry, the B values would go zero, one, zero, one, and then both the B block and the B prime block would be, not be contiguous. And so it would, would break it up, okay? So this is a way in which we try to get all of the cells that have one variable the same, either one or zero, together in some sense so we can see blocks, right? That's the idea of the K-map, is to identify different, different blocks. Okay, let's, uh, let's look at an example uh, of this. Let's write out a truth table. So here will be the row A, B, C, and Y. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Zero, 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 one, zero, one, zero, zero, one, 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 zero, zero, one, zero, one, 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 zero, and one, one, one. And the y values are 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1. Okay, so what is the k map? Let's draw that out. There's a and b. Zero 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 one 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 zero zero one. And these are the C values, and the row values are zero one two three four five and six and seven. Uh, notice another feature of the way we kind of drew these column um, codes, if you want to think of it that way in a little bit different order than they appear in the truth table. This has resulted in the fact that between any two columns, only a single one of the variables changes from zero, 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 one. So only the zero changed the one. Now we go to one, one, 
Now the zero changes to one. If we put the one zero here, both the top and the bottom, both the A and the B values would have changed. We only want one value to change. That means that the other value stays the same and that's going to form a contiguous block. So how about from left to right? So we go from here to here. Well, we go zero, zero, wrap around one, zero. So only the A value changes. So again, the B value is is, is stays, stays the same. You're going to get a contiguous block on the left and right. Okay, so that's another way to look at that reason that we have this kind of funny way to number things. Now let's put in, let's see, we got row zero, two, so zero and two, and four and five, so four and five, and seven. Okay, and the other ones that remain are all zeros. Okay, well, we would like to now see if we can reduce this, the logic function for this, right? The straightforward way, the sum of products way would be to go through and take the min terms for all the rows that have y is equal to 1. So we'd have, let's see, we've got here uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we'd have this min term plus, plus this, or this, or this, or this, or this, or this. All right, but that's probably not going to be minimized. We look at the K-map, and we can see that we have, well, here's a block, a 1 by 2 block. Here's another 1 by 2 block. And we also have, so let's do a blue here, a 2 by 1 vertical block like this here. Okay, so we instead of having one, two, three, four, five terms, now we'd only need three terms for these three uh, one by two or two by one blocks. Let's write those out. What is this block up there? Let's see. Well, what is in common of these two cells? Not the B value. The B value changes, but the A value is zero. So that's not A will be true. And the C value is zero for both. So not A and not C defines that one by two block. Let's see, what about what about this one here? Uh, well, let's see, A is equal to one for both of those. We'll have A and B changes value. So B is a don't care for in that case. And C is equal to one. So this is A and C. And then how about this vertical two by one block? Uh, let's see, so C is both 0 and 1 in that block, so C is not going to come into the logic function. A is 1 and B is 0. So that's A and not B. So we can write this logic function as A and not B, or A and C, or not A and not C. And we only have three terms now instead of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 terms. So we've reduced it. Now, there could have been other ways we could have blocked these uh, components in. Instead of doing this, this blue block here, that 2 by 1, we could all instead, all right, and that was the A and not B, this first guy here, we could have instead used the fact that, remember, the left and the right edges are connected, so we could have had a block that went like this. This guy is actually connected to that one. And let's see, what would be the logic function for those two cells together in a single block? So the value of A is 1 here and 0 there, so A isn't part of the logic function. Uh, B is 0 for both, and C is 0 for both. So that would be not B and not C. So we could have replaced this first term by not B and not C, and we also would get a description of this truth table. Logic functions are not necessarily um, unique. Uh, even the minimized logic functions. There may be more than a way to write them with the same number of terms. It's useful to go through and identify beforehand all the possible blocks that we can find in this three contact K map.
here are the A, B, and C values. And since there are eight cells, let's look, the largest non-trivial block we could have would have four cells. So let's see, what might, uh, well, let's start off with A. Where is A is equal to one? A is equal to one for these two right columns. So these four cells in the two right columns, if you had all those filled in, that would correspond to logic function A. And actually, let's let's do uh, a blue green here. While we're at it, we can draw the left four cells. And those would correspond, of course, then to logic function not A. So if we ever have a K-map and we see that either this left four cells or right four cells are all filled with ones, then we know that one of the terms in our minimized logic function would be A or not A. Let's uh, look at B. Okay, so again, A and B here. 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0. Uh, what cells have B is equal to 1? Well, they're the two central columns. So that, those correspond to the logic function B. And how about cells that have B is equal to 0, not B? Well, that's the left and the right. And we, remember, we think of those as connected they say that because they wrap around. So those would be, those four cells would be not B. We think of them as one block. Okay, how about C? C is the easiest one to see because it's just by itself as far as the it's labeling of the different rows. So clearly the bottom row is C is equal to 1. So if the whole bottom row is filled in with 1s, that's logic function C. And if the whole top row is filled with 1s, Well, that's the logic function corresponding to C is equal to zero, not C. Okay, so those are the are the four cell blocks. They correspond to one of the logic variables, either just the regular logic variable or the inverted one, A A prime B B prime C C prime. Um, now we could go then to two cell blocks. There are going to be more of these. We'll just draw a few of them. Uh, they're all listed in the PDF notes. And these pictures that show these blocks, it could be very useful. If you look at a K-map, you can look then at those different cells and see, right, do, do any of these, these uh, not cells rather, but uh, any of these blocks correspond to cells that are all filled with ones in your K-map. And if they are, then you can read the logic function off directly. So let's uh, look at a few of these two cell blocks. Let's look, for example, at A and B both being one. Well, let's see, that would be this, this column here. A is one and B is one. So this column would be A and B. Now there's two variables involved. We have half as many cells as we had before, where you had only one variable that would specify the block. Now you need two variables. Um, we could have not A and not B. And that would be over here. A is 0 and B is 0. That's not A and not B. And of course, then this the second column would have A is 0 and B is 1. So it's not A and B. And the, and the fourth column, A is 1 is B is 0 and B is 0, A and not B, and so on. 
Okay, we could also have, these are two by one types of cells, uh, rather of uh, blocks of cells. And now we could also have one by two cells. For example, how about A and C? Let's see, so A corresponds to the two right columns and C is the bottom row. So that would be here and here would correspond to A and C. And of course, not A, not C, that would be A is zero and C is zero, that would be then these two cells. And then the other one by two uh, blocks rather, would be like this one up here would be A is one and C is zero, or down here would be A is zero and C is one. Okay, so here we would have, uh, down, down here we have A is one, C is one, so this is A and C, and up here this is not A and not C. Now remember with the wraparound idea, oops, the not B cells, we have to think of them as being contiguous because the whole structure wraps around left to right. So here's A, B, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, and 0, 1 for C. And let's look, for example, at uh, not B and C. Where would that be on this? Not B. Well, not B is where B is zero. So that's left and right columns, and C would be the bottom. So here, these cells, and we draw them with open, kind of open boxes to the left and right, implying that they wrap around. Those would be the cells that would correspond to B is equal to zero, so not B is one, and C is equal to one. And these two above it, uh, above that would be not B and not C. Okay. So we systematically go through all the possible um, two by two or one by four blocks and all of the all of the um, two by one and one by two blocks, and we put those in that uh, those lecture notes. So those are useful to refer to when you're trying to do a logic function reduction using a K map. Let's do an example. Um, suppose we're given that y is represented as a canonical sum, it's a sum of products, in terms of min terms. So over variables a, b, and c, we've got ones in truth table rows two, three, four, five, six, and seven use a k-map to find the minimized logic function. Okay. Zero, 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 one, 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 zero for a and b, and then c, zero, one. And we'll put in the two table row, zero, one, two, three, jump over here, four, five, and six, and seven, and now let's put in all the ones. Well, let's see. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Two, three, four, five, six, and seven, and then zeros in the remaining rows. All right, so how are we gonna describe this? You may be tempted to say, well, there's a, big block here, a two by three block. But that doesn't get you anything. Because notice what happens, you have different values of A in these, these different cells and different values of B. You want a block that has one of the variables always equal to one or always equal to zero. So you don't have three columns in a block, you either have one, two, or four. Of course, if you have four, you'd have the entire 
truth table, which would be kind of a trivial case. So we can take, for example, these middle two. Okay. And what is the logic function corresponding to that? Well, that those are all of the cells where B is equal to 1. A changes, C changes, but B is always 1. So that's logic function B. Now, that would leave these two ones right here. And we could then just describe this column, which is A is equal to 1, B is equal to 0, C takes on both values. And that would be then we could go and say, well, that would correspond to, so or, A and not B. However, remember, it's okay to have our blocks overlap. So instead of that, let's see here. Let's put those two cells into a two by two block of four cells. So let's uh, let's draw this block here. The bigger the block, the fewer variables you have in the expression for that term. And what is this block of cells? Those are all the cells where A is equal to 1. So this would be then, give you the logic function, B or A or A or B, either way. So that is the logic function y is a or b or b or a it doesn't matter if you which order you write them in so you always want to put each cell in the largest possible block because the bigger the block the fewer variables you're going to have in the in the expression and that makes the expression simpler it minimizes the expression Let's do another example. Y is the canonical sum over A, B, and C of min terms corresponding to rows 0, 1, 4, 5, and 7. Write down the minimized logic function using a K-map. Alrighty. So here are your A and B values, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, and the C values, 0 and 1. And here are your row uh, numbers, 0, 1, 2, 3, jump over here, 4, 5, and 6, and 7. So we've got 0 and 1, 4 and 5, and 7, and the other cells are zero. If we wanted to, by the way, we could just leave the zeros out. Sometimes that makes it a little easier to distinguish the, the cells that have ones and the, and the zeros. So let's try that. All right, so we want to uh, get the minimized logic function. Can we find any four cell blocks? Now it would appear that we can't. We don't have this cell, we don't have that cell, we don't have that, we don't have either of the rows. However, remember the left and the right sides wrap around. So we have the entire left column and the entire right column. That means that those actually together form a two by two block of cells. So we'll draw it like this. Open left side there and open right side over there. They actually connect as they wrap around. So what is that logic function? Those are the uh, columns that have b is equal to 0, b is equal to 0. So that, that is the logic function, not b. Now that leaves this single cell right here uncovered. Now we could just write down the min term for row 7, but we can also put that cell into a bigger block. So we can put that into a two by one block right here. And what is the logic function for that block? So not B or, what's this? Uh, those are the two columns where A is equal to one, 
and C, that's the in the row, where C is equal to 1. So that is A and C, and that is your minimized logic function. So with the three contact K map, we have to remember this left and right edges wrap around. But sometimes that's a little bit hard to visualize, but we'll do some, you know, some examples. You do some homeworks to kind of solidify that in your thinking. That's the price we pay for drawing a three variable or a three contact logic function in a two dimensional plane. So we have to make some compromises. Let's look at some identities with three variables. First of all, you have variations of what would correspond to the associative property for addition, A or B or C. You can think of this as doing A or B first, and then or C. Or you can do B or C first, and then A or that with A, or you could also do A or C and or B. Okay, so it doesn't matter what order you do the oring in. Similar thing uh, we have for the product form for the and operation. You can do the A and B and then and C, or you can do the A and B and C, or you could do the A and C, oops, A and C, and then B. Okay, so it's going to form of the associative property. Um, now that's kind of a, a trivial, you know, with respect, uh, uh, observation with respect to the correspondence with arithmetic. However, when we start talking about logic gates, this will actually have important physical consequences. It is not uncommon that we need to form a three variable or operation like this, but we may only have logic gates that do two variable or operations. So this shows us how we can do a three variable or in terms of two two variable ors. One two variable or gate will do say A or B, and then you'll take the output of that and or it with C, right? And there are lots of different ways you can do that. It doesn't matter which two variables you or first, and then you or the result of that with the third. Likewise for the AND. All right, now another useful identity it corresponds to the distributive law for multiplication. So if we have A and B or C, we can write that out as A and B or A and C. We can expand that out. Now we can see that on a, on a K-map. Or likewise, since the K-map is just a visual representation of the truth table, you could also put these in a truth table. But let's look at this on a K-map. A, B, 0, 1, sorry, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, and C is 0, 1. So A, and let's see, let's do B or C first. So B or C. So C would be this entire bottom row, and then B are the middle two uh, columns. And then that's anded with A. So A would be these right two columns. So let's, uh, let's do B or C. Let's put uh, red dots in B or C. So there's B. Uh, there, there's C, I'm sorry, that row. And then here's B. So that's B or C. And then A... We're ending that with the right two columns. So that would then end up giving you these three cells right there. That is A and B or C. Okay, so you can just kind of verify that here. A has to be one. So that's one of these two right columns. And then either B or C has got to be one. So you can't have both B and C is equal to zero. So this, this cell can't be as part of that logic function, but the other three can, because each one of those has either C is equal to one or B is equal to one. 
So the claim is that that is equal to A and B or A and C. Oops. Oh, I think I left that a little too short there. Okay, so what's A and B? A and B. So A is one and B is one. That's that's this column there. And then what is uh, A and C? Well, A that would be either the the right two columns, and C and C would be the the bottom here with the bottom row. So A and C that would be these two cells right there and you see that indeed you end up with the same three cells so you can verify that any of these uh, identities you can verify using k maps or equivalently true tables another useful identity uh, and and some of these identities we'll see why they're useful when we start looking at implementing logic functions using electronic logic gates, by the way. So it may not be immediately obvious why these identities would be useful right now. Here's another identity. A or B and A or C is equal to A or B and C. Now we can just work this out logically thinking about it. Suppose A is true. Well then, if A is 1, 1 or B is 1, and 1 or C is 1, and you got 1 and 1. So this is true. If A is true, then the left is true. Okay. Now, so suppose A is false, A is 0. Then this is 0 or B. Well, that's only true if B is true. So this is just B. And 0 or C is just C. So then the left becomes B and C. Okay. So, so either A is true, in which case the whole thing is true, or if A is false, then B and C have to be true. Now we can also work it out with K-maps. Let's take a look at that. Here are your A and B values. 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, and your C values, 0, 1. All right, let's look at A or B. A or B. Let's see. So A is the right two columns. That's where, where the A value is 1. Or B, well, B would be the middle two columns, so there's overlap there. So the, the right three columns would be A or B. So these, that block right there, that's A or B. Now let's use blue to do A or C. So A is the right two columns and then C is the bottom row. So this looks like this. And that's A or C. And it's an AND of those two. So it's got to be in both of the regions. So where would that be? So here, 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 and here. Okay, so now let's draw another one. Okay, again, here's your A and B values. Here's 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, and your C value is 0, 1. A, well, that would be, let's just put the ones in where, where A is equal to one that's the right two columns or b and c where's b and c well here's here's b b of these middle two columns and c so you've got to be in the middle two columns and the bottom row so that's these two cells right there so it look like that so we can see just using the k maps that indeed a or b and a or c is equal to a or b and c Now, sometimes you have a situation, which at first seems a little strange, where you have 
don't care values or don't cares. <clears throat> so for example, we might write a logic function as y is a canonical sum, sum of products over a, b, and c, where you have min terms for rows three, four, and six, but then a don't care for row seven. What does that mean? Don't care. Can be either zero or one. We don't care. Why would you ever have a don't care in a truth table? Well, the most common reason would be because the corresponding uh, values of A, B, and C that correspond to that row can never happen for some physical reason. All right, so let's just write out the truth table here. A, B, C, and Y. And here is the row. We've got 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1, 1. So for this truth table, we put 1s in 3, 4, and 6, rows 3, 4, and 6, and then row 7, we would put a don't care. We could use a just a minus sign, or we could put an X. Sometimes we'll, I'll use the minus sign. Okay, so that, that right there just means don't care. So maybe it's physically impossible for the variables because the, the variables A, B, and C maybe come from some sensors or some mechanism. And the structure of the way that thing's built, it's impossible for A and B and C to all be have value one, all to be on at the same time for some reason. So therefore, you'll never get the value corresponding to row seven. It will never physically occur. So we don't care what the logic function puts there because it'll never occur. Right? That would be the probably the most common way that this would come about. But um, just mathematically, we allow ourselves the option to specify that some of the rows may have don't care values. Now, what's useful about that is we can make the value in row 7 either be a 0 or a 1, whatever is more convenient for us in determining our logic function, whatever leads to the simplest logic function. So let's take a look at this on a K-map. One, 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 zero, C is zero, one. And here we have our, our row, zero, one, two, three, four, five, and six, and seven. So it's row seven is the don't care. And then the other rows we have are three, four, and six. Three, four, and six. All right, so let's see. Well, we wanna find blocks um that cover this as simply as possible so here's a here's a one by two block right there so what is that that is c is equal to zero and then these right two columns are a is equal to one so this is a and not c now we need to take care of this one right there we don't have anything above it so we can't make a, a vertical block but we have a don't care to the right if we treat that as a one then we can Go like this. And what does that correspond to? Well, it's, it's the C is equal to one row, and it corresponds to the middle two columns. B is equal to one. So this would be B and C. So combining those, we would have the logic function Y equals A and not C, or B and C. Now, if we instead chose to treat this don't care as a zero, then we couldn't put it in this block. And in that case, we would have to just code this single cell by itself and write y equals a and not c. That's this one by two block. And then this single cell, what would it be? 
A is 0, B is 1, C is 1. So that's not A, and B, and C. Okay, and we see that that, that um, logic function is not as simple as the first one. All right, we have more operations. So we would prefer the first one. So since we don't care whether this, the logic function outputs a 0 or 1 for this cell, for this row, uh, let's choose to treat it as a 1, and then we get a simpler logic function. That's kind of a strange concept, but again, it usually arises because it is physically or logically impossible for some reason for this combination of inputs to ever occur, and therefore you're never going to actually evaluate this row. So we can just do a logic function which puts a value in that, uh, that corresponding cell over here that is the most convenient for us to make the simplest logic function. Now it is not uncommon to find that there are equivalent minimized logic functions for a given truth table or a given k-map. So actually we've seen an example of this already. Let's look at another, another example here. Suppose y is the canonical sum over a, b, and c uh, with min terms in rows 1, 2, 3, 4, and 6. Let's make a k-map for this. A, B, and C, and then there we go. And let's see, the rows would be uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. All right, so we've got uh, ones in one at uh, rows 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 6. Very well. All right, so let's see. We want to find, are there any 4x4 four four blocks? No, but there are 2x2 two two blocks. For example, uh, we could do this 2x2 two two block there, and then we could do this 2x2 two two block there, and that leaves this one dangling. Now, So let's first write down those, those two contributions. So this block down here would be, uh, a is equal to 0, it's in the left two columns, and C is equal to 1, you're in the bottom row. So this is not A and C, and then or this is A is equal to 1, the right two columns, and the top row, which is C, is equal to 0. So that would be A and not C. Okay. <clears throat> now this, this remaining one there, we wouldn't want to just write down the three variable product that would correspond to that single cell because we can extend this into a one by two cell or we could extend it into a two by one cell, either, either of those, right? So we could, we could make it go like this or we could make it go like this. We have two options. So let's do the one, uh, the one by two cell. That would be in this center two columns, that's where B is equal to 1, and it's the top row, C is equal to 0. So that would be or, oops, let's make that smaller, or B is 1, so B and C is 0, and not C. Okay, so that's, that's equal to Y. Or, but another way we could have done that, not A and C, or A and not C, or instead of doing this 1 by 2 block, capture that one there we could have done this vertical two by one block and what is that that's in the column 
A is zero and B is one. So that would be not A and B. And so those are equivalent. They give you the same truth table. They cover the same cells in the K-map and they have the same number of terms. There, there are two ors and three ands and there are one, two, three knots and here there's one, two, three knots. Uh, so you could take your pick, all right? So the minimized logic function is not necessarily unique. In general, right, you want to use the largest blocks you can um, to cover this, all the cells in the K-map, or equivalently, to cover all the rows of the truth table. Uh, but that may not be unique. So we've seen several examples of how to use K-maps to minimize logic functions. And remember that the, the K-map is just a graphical way to do algebra. We could have done all of this uh, calculation by doing factoring and applying different identities. But the, the K-maps allow us to do that graphically. They might wonder, is there a way to automate this process so a computer can do it? And the answer is yes. And in the next lecture, we'll talk about the Quine... McCluskey algorithm. Some people pronounce it Quinn McCluskey. I, I mostly hear Quine McCluskey. Uh, and another add on we need to call Petrick's methods. Uh, Petrick's method. And this is basically just a, a computerized way to do K maps, and it doesn't require us to actually graph things in two dimensions and so it can be applied to any number of variables although there is a practical limitation because the, the complexity of the problems grow exponentially but in principle if you had a fast enough computer with enough memory you could do solve any logic minimization for problem using the coin mccluskey algorithm with petrick's method okay so we'll look at that in the next lecture uh, but we're now going to look at a little a free um, Windows program called Logic Friday that implements this. So let's take a look at this. So here is the interface to Logic Friday. To get started, we can go up here and we can say new truth, oops, <laughs> new truth table. There we go. And we want to have three inputs, A, B, and C, and one output. Let's they name it. By default, F0, let's call it Y. Click OK, and here's your truth table. So these are the rows, they call them the terms. And then here are the A, B, and C values, and then the Y values. And now you can, if you double click on one of these, you go from 0 to 1. Double click again, you get an X, which means don't care. Double click again, you go back to 0. Let's do that previous um, problem we just did with K maps. Let's see, that had. Min terms for uh, ones for rows one, two, three, and four. So one, two, three, and four, and row six. Okay, and when we're done, we just hit enter, and it shows here is the uh, just sum of products direct expression, just the sum of the min terms. All right, and this just shows you the different A, B, and C sets of values, the different rows where Y is equal to one. Now we go up here to operation minimize now we want to do in all the cases we're doing we want to do exact this is the exact quine mccluskey algorithm if you have a really big problem where the quine mccluskey algorithm becomes prohibitively expensive in terms of a computation you can do this fast which is a so-called heuristic algorithm we'll talk about that later um okay this will be really quick and there we go minimized logic function not a and c or a and not c or b and not c and if you go back and look at what we just did with the K-maps, that was one of the results we got for that logic function. Uh, we actually had two, right? They were equivalent. And we don't care which one we get here. So we, we just, we get one. They're kind of, you could arbitrarily choose either one of those. And so uh, Logic Friday chose this one here. So that's our, our logic function. Okay, so that's, you know, the, one of the operations you can do. 
Uh, you can also, when we talk about logic gates later, you can map this to logic gates, right? You can get a little uh, logic circuit. Um, you can modify your truth table, or you could have put in a, um, an actual logic equation, or let's say our logic equation is y equals a or b and c, and we, so we just use a space to represent the and operation. We, there's no dot on the normal keyboard. Uh, put a semicolon and then enter, and then it'll give you the truth table here. Um, and let's see if we want to uh, truth table show all rows, then you get a complete truth table there. So there's that logic function. Now let's go back and look at the case we did with uh, the don't care um, problem. And so that was a three input, a three contact circuit where we had ones in rows three, four, and six. Let's see, here's three, three, four, and here's six. And then row seven was a don't care. So we double click and double click, there's don't care. Hit enter. And now let's do file, I'm sorry, operation, minimize, exact. And there's what it gets us, B and C or A and not C, which is what we also uh, got. Let's do another example. A and B values. Zero, 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 one, 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 zero. C values is zero, one. Rows was zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Suppose we had this, 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 and this. Those were our ones, and then these are zeros. <clears throat> Let's do this with a K map first. All right. Um, we see a block here for sure. And this row five entry, we can put that into a block with the one above it. This one is isolated. There's nothing to the left, right or top. This one here though, remember that this wraps around. So we could take that one and combine it with this guy over here. And then finally we would have to, this one would have to be coded separately. Let's see, so here we've got this red box, this one by two block is A is equal to one and C is equal to zero. So A is one and C is zero, A and not C. Then if we did um, this vertical two by one, uh, the blue box there, that would be A is one and B is zero. So A and not B. Uh, then if we did this, uh, coded this one by this uh, left to right wrap around, that's a one by two block where B is equal to zero in both cases and C is equal to zero. So that would be or not B and not C. And then finally this remaining cell, we've got to just code directly. A is zero, B is one, C is one. A is zero, so not A and B is one, so and B and C. So it looks like that would be our logic function. Okay, so here that here's our what we just did over here on the left. So let's go into Logic Friday and check our work. Root table, three inputs, one output called Y. And we've got let's see, row zero, one, two, three. Um, four, five, and six. Four, five, and six. Enter. There's the unminimized logic function. Operation minimize exact. And there we go. A and not B. There's A and not B. A and not C. There's A and not C. B and not C. There's B and not C. And not A, B, and C. There we go. 
So we get the same result, um, okay, which is we should, because it's doing the same kinds of operations, although it's doing a computer version rather than the graphical version. Now, obviously, the Logic Friday could operate on much larger problems than we would be able to do graphically. Really, the graphical KMAP method is only effective, I would say, up to four contacts, four input variables. After that, uh, in principle, sometimes people will do five variables, but it gets really hard to make sense of the, the graphics, at least to me. The four variables really is kind of the limit of that. Whereas you can easily go up to, well, it really just depends on the, the processing power and memory of your computer, how large a problem you can do with the Quine-McCluskey algorithm.